Hello and welcome back. In this series of instructional videos I'm covering hot glass ladle casting. It's a little bit different than kiln casting because it has to happen in a matter of seconds whereas kiln casting happens slowly over a period of several hours. So first I'll go over the tools and equipment and then I'll demonstrate the process. So the first thing I'll go over is safety and for safety I use a pair of number three shade glasses because I peer into the furnace numerous numerous times every day and it's also good for the torch flame when I'm fixing things and I have a sleeve that I wear which is a, a welding sleeve made of leather and I wear it on one arm only because this is the arm that goes near the furnace and this is the arm that goes into the annealer the other arm can just be bare, it doesn't matter. And then I have a pair of insulated leather welding gloves. And they're like $15 or $20 a pair, and they're, they're kind of disposable. Depending on whether or not you're, you're grabbing at stringers, they can last a long time. Um, the vegan gloves I would never use. They're made of mineral fibers like glassy mineral fibers and they're extremely toxic and they're also expensive. One of the main problems with them is that if you're lifting something heavy the fibers break and then the next time you use the glove you don't have any protection in the same area because the fibers have all been broken up and also the fibers get airborne so if you're holding or working around something hot and there's uh, convection currents rising up around the gloves, it carries those little fibers up into the air and you can see them sparkling in the light. So they're, they're toxic and expensive and I find them virtually useless. So I prefer the, uh, the cow gloves. Okay, the other, this is a very important tool because not only is it used for cutting off the stringers but it's used to hold the ladle and that way the hot ladle isn't actually touching the glove. It's resting on the scissors. There. So that's how I hold the ladle. And I can slide it up and down on the scissors. Get really close when I'm pouring. And if it gets a bit too hot, then I just back it up a little bit. Like that. And I have the scissors in my hand, ready to do cutting. And the only other tool that I use is a, is a pair of needle nose pliers because sometimes I have to grab something uh, like a little piece of something to fix it. And then I also have a torch and the torch sits on the side and I bring it over when I have to do repairs to something or pop a small air bubble. And in the case of this mold here, I have to heat up the external corners so that they don't cool more than the rest of the interior. And I also have various tools for lifting. I don't lift, I don't put hot glass onto gloves and carry it to an annealer. I make a tool that's specific to whatever it is that I need to carry. So this one's made of a piece of teak flooring and a piece of mahogany plywood and a piece of sheet metal. And it's exactly what I need so I have the mechanical support but I have the insulation so that when I carry these things to the annealer they don't lose any heat and crack. All right, I'll demonstrate the pouring method, but so for pouring, I'll reach into the furnace like this and I'll dip this into the glass halfway and then I'll turn it and I'll lift it up and dab it back down again and lift it up again quickly before I pull it out of the furnace. And because there's a yoke on my furnace door, I'm actually just I'm actually just rocking the ladle like this up and down before I lift it up and pull it out. So because I'm pouring out of the left hand side of the ladle, I'm taking the gather from the right hand side. And that way there's no contamination on the clean side here that I need for pouring. So I dip in from one side and lift it out and I pour from the other side like this. Now I'll talk about the water pail. 
water is basically your best friend if you're doing hot glass casting because the molds have to be cooled and the ladles have to be kept cold. If the ladles are put into the furnace dry, then the glass will stick to them. If the ladles are put into the furnace hot, then you've got a real problem. So basically, I prefer to have uh, probably about 20 gallons of water right beside me at all times. And I prefer actually to put the ladle into the furnace with a little bit of water in the ladle. Because what happens is, as that vaporizes into steam, it creates this little barrier that elevates the glass off the steel so it has less chance to make contact. Because the more contact the glass has with the ladle, the less time you have to do the pouring and the more the ladle chills the glass. So I've taken the gather and I'm dabbing it and out I come. Now I'm just going to cut off this little tiny stringer and do the pour. I'm careful not to overlap because that will trap a big air bubble. And I'm done. Now I go back and forth a few times to get a very thin stringer and then I can pull it off. Then I'll lift this off and I'll lift this off because those are the two areas that usually stick to the ladle. And then I put the glass back in the furnace and put the ladle back in the water. I have to apply some heat to these external corners, just a little bit of heat to prevent them from cooling off too much. That's it. So I have a nice continuous flat surface and there's no air bubbles because as I was pouring I didn't jump ahead of my pouring flow. What I did is I added to the flow as it moved across the mold. I also have a kitchen knife here that I use to uh, just to elevate it a little bit and check it. And then when it's ready then I use the kitchen knife to put it onto the the tool to carry it to the annealer. I'm just going to preheat this a little bit, this piece of steel, and then it's ready to go. There we go, off to the annealer. These are corporate award that I make each year for our local chamber of commerce. Okay, I'll show that one more time. The scissors are on the handle. So I have everything arranged here that I need in about six feet of space. There's six feet between my furnace and my annealer. And in that space is my finishing torch, my work surface, my tools, and my water pail. If I had to start running across the room with a ladle full of glass, I'd lose valuable working time because there's really only a few seconds to be able to get a nice pour out of that ladle. So for casting hot glass, I have a yoke in front of my furnace door and the yoke has two little tabs on it here to keep the ladle centered so that it can't wander and touch the side walls. It also enables me to go in and out really quickly. So this ladle here that I'm using is a 16 pound ladle, so it holds 16 pounds of glass. 
and you can see where the weld is here where the handle joins the cup. The heavier the ladles are, it's a good idea to move the handle down more towards the center because if the handle is centered, then basically when you're turning it for pouring, it turns very easily and you're, you're ac actually it wants to turn itself because it's centered perfectly. Now I'll talk for a sec about these scissors. The reason why I use these Chinese hoop scissors is because the pivot point is almost halfway down. Uh, the problem with glass blowing shears is they're basically based on the design of sheet metal shears, like tin snips. So the pivot point is much further up, and that means you have to open up your hand twice as far to get the blade to open up half as much. So I like this ratio much better. The further this pivot point is towards the center, the faster action you get when you open and close the scissors. And also they're extremely sharp and they're only about three dollars. I think the last time I bought them I, I bought five or six pairs for three dollars each and I think I'm on the second pair and that was about fifteen or twenty years ago. So they're quite cheap. If they get loose then you just hit them with a hammer and tighten up this rivet a little bit and um, they're excellent. Excellent for glass work. Stringers can be quite a problem for hot glass casting but as you can see in my videos, I cut the stringers off with scissors when the ladle leaves the furnace. But it still makes for quite a mess. I have to clean this off two or three times a day. And I have to pick it off with my sill plate as well. I'd encourage you to go on the internet, onto YouTube or somewhere, and have a look at other studios and how they do their hot glass casting. There's lots of different ways that people do it. I'm not suggesting that my way is any better than any other way, but it works very efficiently for what I'm doing. If you want to see a, a good example of how typical glass casting is done in a glass blowing studio, then check out that reality TV show called Blown Away, uh, Season 1, Episode 8, probably about 12 minutes into it. You can see a, a very accomplished glass blower make three attempts at ladle gathering. And you can see how important those basic rules are. You need a cold, wet ladle, you need good quality scissors, good quality gloves, and you need to dip the ladle in halfway. And those are very important rules. So, anyhow, that's my advice. So that's how these turn out. They're embossed on the back. The embossing's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. And the front's flashed off beautifully smooth. They're about 3 quarters of an inch thick at the bottom and they taper down to a little bit more than a quarter inch at the top. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I had the mold on a bit of an angle so that they're, uh, they're poured thicker at the bottom. So these get mounted onto a wooden base that's laser engraved. So this is the introduction video. In the next segment, I'm going to show how to make this kind of thing here. That's a napkin holder. And this is a pen holder. And this is a, a smaller pen holder in like a dark purple glass. They're a great way to experiment with hot glass pouring and how to deal with ladling and stringers and all that sort of thing. And they're quite playful and whimsical. And each one turns out completely different. So that's what I'm going to cover in the next video. Alright, thanks for watching the introduction to hot glass casting video. There will be seven project videos following this one. And the first one's the one I just mentioned. And then there will be a basic sand preparation and casting one. And there will be one on casting onto convex sand surfaces. There will be a multi-leveled sand casting video. And a video covering casting with color and a video covering casting with inclusions. And then there'll be a video covering
core casting, which is doing castings that have hollow areas. So there's lots more to look forward to. So until next time, have fun!